This is Ted Wynn from The Athletic, and it's a year of the Tiger. And fittingly, the Bengals are in the Super Bowl. Of course, everyone wants to talk about Joe Burrow and his ascension to becoming an elite quarterback, but the defense deserves a ton of credit as well. In three playoff games, they've sacked the quarterback eight times and forced seven turnovers. The defense isn't comprised of superstars like the Rams' defense is, but defensive coordinator Lou Amarello has a unit playing hard and together. His ability to adjust from week to week has been a key factor in the Bengals' playoff run. So against the Raiders, the Bengals went heavy man coverage to play 15 snaps of man coverage. And against cover one, which is man-to-man -man with one deep safety, sometimes they had a robber uh, in the middle of the field, sometimes they pressured. Um, the Raiders were 3 out of 11, had three sacks, and uh, there was one scramble for 20 yards and one fumble. So it was, it was a very successful game plan by the Bengals to go heavy man. They didn't call a ton of blitzes, um, man blitzes, but they did it in, at the right time, and when they did it, they were well-designed blitzes that um, hit home. So here's one of them on third and four. Um, you're going to have Hunter Renfro motioning in to form a stack alignment with Darren Waller, and this is where Carr wants to go. He wants to go to Waller on this double move, and Waller just wasn't him, quite himself, so I think that also played into why the Bengals wanted to go heavy man-to-man -man because Waller just didn't have the explosion he did before his injury. Um, so Carr wants to go to Waller in his double move, but um, he slowed down by the man-to-man -man coverage. Hinton, Hinton doesn't have him, but he's in front of him, so that slows down as a release, and Carr can't get to him because he doesn't even get into his route yet as Carr is getting hit. And it's a shame because he does get open. So let's look at the pressure and how they got home. So they're going to start, the Bengals are going to start off in a 50 look. So they're going to have a nose tackle with two five techniques outside of them. And the Raiders are going to use a four man slide against this look, which means that these four offensive linemen, the left guard, center, right guard, right tackle, have the gaps to their right. They are essentially responsible for these four defenders here. One, two, three, four. They have these four defenders. And on the backside, Colton Miller has Hendrickson, this backside defensive end, man to man. And then Carr actually points out to Richard and tells him, you have 57 if he blitzes. And he's showing blitz right now. So let's see what they do and how it plays out. So, um, Again, the center has a gap to his right, but he has a nose tackle right in front of him and he can't just let him go. So he has to at least get a piece of him for the guard to be able to get there. So he does, the nose tackle occupies him, but then what the nose tackle is gonna do is he's gonna go opposite and then 92, this defensive tackle is going to eventually shoot this A gap. And then you have a defensive end Hubbard who's playing linebacker and he's gonna loop around to the C gap. Watch how, what Hubbard does. So Hubbard is going to the C gap, but he initially, his path takes him to the A gap initially. So that gets us the attention of the center. And he doesn't see 92 actually knife into the A gap. And Leatherwood has to pass him off and pick him up, but Leatherwood doesn't do it in time. Hubbard gets through free. 92 gets through free. They sack Carr, and that doesn't end up being a safety, but it's a sack on third and four. So against the Titans, they used a much different game plan in the divisional round. Obviously, the Titans want to run the ball. They want to get in their heavy two, three tight end sets. Uh, they want to run outside zone. They want to run duo. Um, and with Derrick Henry back, obviously, the focus is going to be stopping him. And the Titans did that by using a tilt front, front which is like a 6-1 or 6-2, depending on the formation. Um, and the Patriots famously use this defense against the Rams in the Super Bowl to shut down their run game and their play-action game. Um, and, and the Rams were really good at rushing the ball on, in that season, but they couldn't get anything against the, uh, the Patriots in this 6-1, um, 6-2 front. And notice that they have Von Bell play the 9 technique over here, and the Patriots actually did something similar with Patrick Chung um, they played him at the 9 technique as well. Just gives him a little more coverage versatility. But this safety has to be able to take on blocks and uh, make tackles. So the, the Titans are going to run duo here. Which is, duo is described as power without a puller. It's called duo because you want to get at least two double teams. But because of this front, the only they're only able to get one double team here. And 
the defense does a pretty good job just clogging every single gap. So here, on this type of play, uh, Derek Henry are reading the mic, and the mic is outside here. So usually Henry will want to cut this in A gap, but 92 has his head in A gap, 94 has his head in A gap. He's not able to get there, so he tries to bounce the play outside. And then Von Bell does a good job of beating his block, and then making a tackle on Henry for a short gain. That's just a really good run defense, and obviously they're giving up some coverage in order to uh, stop the run, but it was a successful plan, and it worked, and the Titans just kept on running into it. I also want to compliment the Bengals' defense on how well-prepared they look for their opponent's bread-and-butter concepts. Uh, sometimes they look like they know what play is coming before the snap, and I think part of that is the fact that they signed a bunch of veteran defensive players that have seen it all, um, Nate Tice from the Athletic Football Show made a great point that these guys have played in a lot of different systems and that allows Armorello uh, to really be diverse in his scheme and to switch his game plans from week to week. A good example of that is the first snap against the Titans. They're going to come out in their 6-1 defense. Uh, the Titans are going to try to get them on a play action concept first play of the game. Uh, so Ryan Tannehill is going to fake the ball to Derrick Henry. You're going to have A.J. Brown and Julio Jones running a switch release. Um, Julio Jones runs a curl, but you can see when he gets vertical, uh, Bates, the free safety in the middle field, is not threatened by that ver verticality. He's kind of stopping his feet, shuffling. He knows that they want to run a drift route or a curl route or something inside in into the intermediate part of the field, and he jumps this route and picks off the ball, uh, really set the tone for the rest of the day. That was a huge play, um, and that's just good preparation by the Bengals' defense. So against the Chiefs, the Bengals had a drastically different game plan than uh, in, in either round of the playoffs. Obviously, the Chiefs are a very different offense, and uh, they started the game playing a lot of two deep defenses, and I think uh, you know the stats show that the Bengals um, were obviously more effective defending the Chiefs in the regular season when they were in two deep. Um, and I think the thinking was that they wanted to start the game in two deep and try to limit their explosive gains uh, especially because the Chiefs are just so good with their opening script. Um, th they wanted to, yeah, just limit the explosive pass plays, and it kind of backfired because the Chiefs were so explosive, scoring, you know, 21 points in, in that first half, almost scoring 28. Um, but they, I, I don't think that they just made this adjustment at halftime, decide that they were just going to drop eight and rush three. I think it was, part of their thinking was to, uh, really shift to this defense in the second half. That way, the Chiefs don't have time to really adjust because it, halftime is over. They can adjust on the sideline, but they can't make some huge adjustments, and it's a little more difficult to adjust. So that's basically what their big adjustment in the second half was. They started dropping eight, um, and they started to just rush three, get more guys into coverage. So they played more single high. They were playing more man-to-man. -man while dropping eight that gave him extra robber so you see they have two robbers inside they have a free safety here um, so this is going to be a little difficult to explain how this coverage works but you can just see how well they executed these schemes and how they were able to just drop right into where wherever the uh, chiefs were going to run their routes they knew what was coming so you have travis kelsey up top here you have uh, tyreek hill here um, then you have Demarcus Robinson outside with Eli Apple on him. And then you have Jesse Bates and Von Bell uh, playing the two robber positions inside. So initially, Hill is going to run a deep cross. Bates is going to turn around and rob this route. He's going to help on this route uh, deep. And then you're going to have Kelsey who's going to be running across as well. Um, and then you have Demarcus Robinson running a shallow and Eli Apple following him. But watch what happens uh, to Robinson's route. So Bates ends up taking Robinson. And then when Bates takes Robinson, Apple falls off of him and ends up doubling Kelsey. So you end up with a double on Kelsey. You end up with a double on Hill Deep. And you end up with Bates with a leverage advantage on Robinson because he was so far inside. It was easy for him to just get on top of his route and in front. 
So Patrick Mahomes ends up getting a bunch of time on this this play with just a three man rush. But you know, if you're confused on how this coverage worked, he's confused as well. Um, he doesn't see anybody open. He tries to scramble around, and eventually the pass rush is able to get to him and sack him. And they did that multiple times as a game where it looked like Mahomes had a ton of time, but he just couldn't find anybody anybody open. And it was due to this. Um, really well thought of and really well executed defensive scheme by the Bengals. One thing that bodes well for the Bengals defense is that the Rams don't run a ton of concepts. They believe in quality over quantity and just based on what they've done in the playoffs, I think Armorello is going to have them ready to take away those concepts. They're going to know what to look for. They're going to be prepared. They're going to be dropping to the right spots. So it's going to be really up to Sean McVay uh, to switch up what he does. And that really hasn't been his MO since he's been in the league. But maybe he's learned from his mistakes. He learned from that first Super Bowl against the Patriots. So that's going to be something to look out for. And if you want a deeper dive into the film and to the analytics, me and my partner at The Athletic, uh, Shio Kapadia, wrote a really in-depth article about the analytics and film breakdowns from this game. So make sure you check that out. The link will be below. If you like this content, hit the subscribe button. And I'll talk to you guys next time.